every valley, every valley shall be exalted.
the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy my god and sinners reconcile he nations rise with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Glory to the newborn King. To the newborn King.
Good evening. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Cathedral of Bishop Louis Kinnaman III, the fourth Bishop of Biloxi. Our celebrant for this weekend Mass is Father Godfrey Ando, and this Mass is being celebrated for Robert and Jean Cridal. Our second collection is for Nativity Cathedral Maintenance. With the warmest and most joyful Christmas sentiments, we welcome everyone to the solemn festival of Christmas as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are thankful to be together. Visitors, we would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us for today's Mass at the Nativity Cathedral. It is our pleasure to have you worship with us. Thank you. Good evening. Merry Christmas. Please join in singing our entrance hymn to be found in your Breaking Bread book on page 93. O come, all ye faithful. We'll sing verse 4 and then 1, 2, 3. Oh, 
Good evening to you all. And Merry Christmas to you all. Oh, come on. I know you can do better than that. Merry Christmas to you all. Exactly. That's the spirit of the season. We are grateful to God for bringing us here in his presence on a very special night like this. A night that we also identify with that faithful night when the shepherds gathered and the good news was given to them that a newborn savior has been given to us and they went in search of him. We have also come after four weeks of preparation to encounter him and he's finally here on the verge of us encountering him. Our only impediment is our sin. Let us, in the humility of our hearts, beg the Lord for cleansing, beg the Lord for purification, beg the Lord for forgiveness of sin to be made worthy to encounter him so that our joy will be full in him. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie May the Almighty God Himself have mercy on us. May He forgive us all our sins and bring all of us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest and on earth we to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord of heaven, we King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God and Father. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mystery of the light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. So we please be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
The people who talked, walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord of your son, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord all you love. Song sing praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us all from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. <coughs> but to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Amen. And who are those? Who are those who are walking in darkness and have seen the great light? You, me, all of us. 
Once upon a time, we were in darkness because we had no Savior. But the God who created us out of love and planted us in his paradise in the Garden of Eden, and our first parents betrayed us, never gave up on us. That God is the one who pursued us again and again, sending forth even his prophets. The prophets proclaiming the word of God and inviting his people to come back to him, yet would refuse, would still linger in sin. But God never gave up on us. Until, from the letter to the Galatians, Paul tells us, when the appointed time of the Lord came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem the people under the law. When the appointed time of the Lord came, after he had sent the prophets upon prophets and the people of God still not yielding and hearing him and reconciling to the Lord, he did not give up on us. He sent his son at the appointed time. Born of a woman, born under the Lord to redeem us who were walking in darkness. To bring the light of God to shine upon us. To bring us into his radiant light. What a love. What a love that never gives up on us. What a love that in the quiet of the night, he sneaked in into our world. Though God, he did not fight equality to be with the Father. He humbled himself and identified with us left his divinity above and came to our level and came to our rescue. What a God who loves us and never gives up on his children. And that's what John would tell us in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not what? Perish. May not continue to dwell in darkness but will be redeemed to walk in the light that amazing light of God. A friend of mine says, for God so loved the world that he didn't send us an email. For God so loved the world that he didn't send us a text message. But he sent his son in person to come and redeem us. And coming into our world, the day he made an entrance into the world, he defined the whole of creation. He made an appearance and he left an indelible mark. And whether we like it or not, whether we try to take him out of the season, he still cannot be taken out of the season because the season all revolves around him. Amen. Amen. He's at the center of the season. The whole of our time, the whole of our calendar revolves around him. Our calendar that we have, it begins from the time of his birth. 2023 years ago, when he entered our world. And that's why we have what we have. But he came for you. He came to redeem us. He came to reconcile man to God. The son of God came into our world. So that he who was the son of God became the son of man. And as he became the son of man, he also gave the opportunity to the sons and daughters of man to be made sons and daughters of God. The son of God became the son of man so that through him, sons and daughters of men will become sons and daughters of God. What a gift we have in Jesus Christ. And that's why as much as we would try to kick him out of the season, you can never get him out of the season. Because he defines the season. And he is a reason for the season. And therefore, let us place him where he belongs in the season. He's the center of it. And he says to us in his word, he is the vine and we are the branches. And cut off from him, we can do nothing. Cut off from him. All we can do we're still wallowing in our sin and in the darkness. But he's a light who is recruiting us. The letter to the Colossians says in Colossians 1, 13, 
He came to transform us from the kingdom of darkness to transfer us into the kingdom of God's wonderful light. He's the light. Still recruiting people and leading them from darkness into light. The choice is ours. Whether we want to choose to remain in the dark or to follow his light and be in the radiant light of God. That choice is a perfect gentleman who doesn't force on us. And that's why St. Augustine will say, the God who created us without our consent will not save us without our consent. So he's leaning on you. He's counting on you. And he's counting on your permission and your cooperation with him and with his grace. So that we will all be recruited into that wonderful light of God and be saved by him. And beloved, that's the message for us this season of grace, this season of love, this season of joy, this season of peace. He comes with all of those blessings. But we can taste of those blessings when we have made a choice to walk with him from darkness into light. That choice is ours, and I pray we make the right choice. And beloved, he wants to make you a co-redeemer. He wants to reconcile our world. He came, one of the main missions for which he came is to reconcile humanity back to divinity. To reconcile man to God. And he wants to make you a co-redeemer in reconciling first our brothers and sisters. Especially around this time of the year when we as family members get together. As human beings, we get on the nerves of each other. As human beings, we get at the throat of each other. As human beings, we are very annoying sometimes. Even when we love our brothers and sisters and our children and our parents, we still remain very annoying. But he doesn't want you to live in resentment. He doesn't want you to live in pain. He doesn't want you to live in hurt. That's why he wants to make you a co-redeemer, beginning and reconciling your family first. So whatever is broken in the family, he wants you to cooperate with him so that you reconcile and heal all the hurt and the pain and the brokenness of our families. That's what he wants to make of us. It's when we have been able to reconcile on the horizontal level, then we can make a leap with him so that the effort he's making to make sons and daughters of men, the sons and daughters of God, will be reached. He wants to start on our own level first before we can all make a leap with him to the height of the divine. But the choice is ours. And I pray as we celebrate this holy night, we'll allow him. Without him, we cannot make it. The trick is that we fight and fought, no, work too hard on our own to make it. And it's not possible. It's only with the cooperation of his grace. It's only when we open up to him that we receive the help we receive the graces, we receive the strength that enables us to be able to achieve what we want to do in him. So quit making the effort on your own. Quit believing the lies of the enemy, that you are not good enough, that you don't belong. Quit believing in those lies and trust that your identity is not in the lies of the enemy. Your identity is in the one who loved you to the point of leaving his heavenly throne above to come and identify himself with you. To redeem you from darkness into light. He is the reason for the season. And he loves you. He cares about you. And whatever the enemy tells you. Those are lies. Don't believe in the deception and the lies of the enemy. After all his name is the father of lies. That's the name of the enemy. He identifies and calls us by our sin. But our God identifies and calls us by name. So trust him. Give him the chance. Give him the opportunity. So that he will recruit you from the darkness that the enemy is imprisoning you to. And bring you into the light. The wonderful light of God. That light is what has crept into the silent night. That he came into our world. He's still recruiting people. Transforming sinners and making them into saints. He's still recruiting people. He made an entrance once in our world. And he did not leave. Even after he ascended to heaven, he still commissioned you and I to continue his work of redemption. That's why he's making you a co-redeemer, a reconciler with him. 
beginning with your family. I pray we give him a chance so that he strengthens us, fills us, gives us the grace so we will live for him so that we will also be able to move with his grace from the darkness into the light that he's come to fill our world with. He's making saints out of sinners and you will not be an exception if only you give him a chance. Amen. <clears throat> Shall we rise and affirm our faith, our belief in the one God? I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. In this night filled with blessed light, we bring the needs of the world to a glorious God. For all leaders in the church, may Christ be their wisdom and strength as they minister to his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. our prayer. For peace and justice in our nations and across the world, may he who is acclaimed as beloved son dwell in the hearts of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who feel defeated in whatever their daily battles are, and for all in need of any kind of healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. our prayer. For this community gathered tonight to celebrate Christ's birth, may the Lord help us always be people of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, May they experience God's mercy in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, hear the prayers we have brought before you and answer them according to your holy will. For we've asked them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, which earth has given him the hands of made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With contrite heart and a humble spirit, may our sacrifice be acceptable to you, Lord God. Pray, my brethren, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the praise and glory of His name for our benefit of all the Let us pray. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be with Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that we, recognizing him, God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love with things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ your son our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts these offerings these holy and unblemished sacrifices 
which we offer firstly for your holy catholic church <coughs> be pleased to grant her peace to guard unite and govern throughout the whole world together with your servant francis our pope and louise our bishop all those who hold into the truth hand on the catholic and apostolic faith remember your servant <coughs> and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you on the eternal to you the eternal and living and true god celebrating the most sacred night on which the blessed mary the immaculate virgin brought forth the savior for this world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, his spouse, and the blessed apostles and martyrs, St. Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting power, through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. <laughs> be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved son our lord jesus christ on the day before he was to suffer he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with his eyes raised to heaven to you O god his almighty father giving you thanks he said a blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said a blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, no more, until you come again, until you Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate a memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, 
in the sight of your divine majesty that all of us through this participation at the altar receive the most holy and blessed body of your son and to be filled with his holy grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember, Lord, also your servant, who have gone before us, marked the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace, especially for Bob and Jean Cradle, for whom we offer this Mass. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servant, who those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, with all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, and sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him with him in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours almighty Father forever and ever At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and you say to us, gathered around your altar this evening, the peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our brother and friend, our newborn Savior, be with you all.
Please join me to sing if you can. Come and behold him on the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord, for he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. Christ the Lord. Behold Jesus the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you would enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe to eternal life. Far amid the snows, upon a way. 
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, that we who are gladdened by the participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined the most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may the God who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you share us in the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of the almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Hold on. Would you please sit for two minutes? So, on behalf of Bishop Louis Kinneman the Third, the Chief Shepherd of the Diocese of Biloxi, on behalf of Father Bart. My associate on behalf of Dickin Johnny, Dickin Keith, and their spouses, and the entire Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Cathedral Parish staff, just want to extend our gratitude to the Music and Fine Art Ministry. Let's give them a hand of applause. To Mr. Terry, the choristers, including our student uh, school choir who sang at the 4 p.m. mass this, this evening. We just cannot do this whole process of preparing ourselves to encounter Christ at Christmas without all the sacrifices and dedication you've made. God richly bless you. Amen. Amen. Also like to use the opportunity to thank the altar no association uh, altar service and then also the altar ladies association who have been helping in the decoration and setting up of the altar and all of the environment and the decorators the one who put up the crib and all of the other beautiful things lights that you see around let's give them also a round of applause <laughs> we have countless numbers of people who have you know behind the scenes worked in making sure that everything runs smoothly uh, mr mike kessler thank you for making the services available to our brothers and sisters our parents and loved ones who are not able to physically join us here by streamlining it uh, live streaming it and all of the uh, media activities that you undertake for the parish god richly bless you amen, amen. And for all others whom I may have forgotten to mention, my prayer is that the newborn Savior fills your heart with his blessing, with his peace and favor from the heavenly throne above. And I pray that this Christmas fills you with all the riches from the heavenly throne above. Amen. Amen. My two minutes is up. <laughs> I wish you all Merry Christmas. Okay, one more time. I wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Very good. I think that's much more <laughs> vibrant than the first one. <laughs> I pray God fills you with joy. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Go in peace. Please join in singing our closing carol, Silent Night, Holy Night, number 79. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 